Why do I do this to myself? I know I said at the end of my last vlog where I went out of town and I crossed the 40,000 word mark on Wednesday or no, Tuesday, last Tuesday, that there was a good chance I was going to end up having to do a, another 10,000 word day in order to hit my NaNoWriMo goals because Thanksgiving, because traveling back home, because I had some client stuff to do, all the reasons. I'll admit though, I was doing really well on client work and starting around Friday or Saturday based on where I was with my workload, I was like, no, I could, I could spread it out a little bit, at least make it like two 5,000 word days. But long story short, yesterday I turned in a 60,000 word ghostwriting project and I, I had planned on, I finished it Sunday and I had planned on like taking half of yesterday, which is Monday, to read it and write 5,000 words in my book and then today finish reading it and write the last 5,000 words of my book, but I ended up just spending all day yesterday very carefully going through the whole manuscript. It took some time. You know, I, I like to turn in the cleanest draft I possibly can to the client, and once I got halfway through, I was like, I'm kind of in the zone with this. Let's just finish it and get it turned in, and then tomorrow will be all about finishing my own book. So now I'm facing a 10,000 word day, and as you guys know, because and pretty much only because I'm using dictation, I feel pretty confident I can hit that. I have had 10,000 plus word days in the past actually, you know, writing a first draft, you know, typing, but that's only happened like two or three times and it wasn't a pleasant experience to be honest and it's not something I would be forcing myself to do now. But because this is not a first draft, because this is a super rough draft like if we had a scale from outline like just scene by scene summary outline to first draft what I'm doing right now is definitely way closer to outline than you know to first draft and the dictation just helps it go so much faster so I'm confident in hitting that word count today what I'm anxious about is that I have to finish the book because I am Definitely, I'm looking at it right now, and I know where I left off that shit was hitting the fan. You know, it, it's definitely, I'm definitely into Act 3 territory where everything is starting to come together, but the problem is, I don't know exactly how it all does come together. And this is, have I mentioned I've never really pantsed a novel before? Um, and I know I've said that I knew where this was all going. I knew who did it. I know a lot of things about the ending, but I don't know so many details, and there are a lot of things I had fun setting up throughout this book that I don't know how I'm gonna tie up in the end. And this was one of the reasons I always was like enchanted by the idea of pantsing. I like the idea of discovering a story as it happens, almost as if I'm reading it, you know? But uh, I'm not gonna lie, this last part here is stressing me out. Even though I know, obviously, there's gonna be, I can't even call it a revision. This is just what I'm gonna use to start writing a first draft. Um, so yeah, obviously, there's gonna be a lot of changes I'm gonna have to make. But I just, I so I, I don't, if everything doesn't tie up perfectly, I mean, that's that's normal because it's a rough draft. But it's still just like, I'm so used to writing very clean outlines and knowing exactly what's going to happen at the end that doing it this way is just making me a little bit claws in the ceiling. Um, and I have no idea what's going to happen, but uh, it's, let's see, it's 9.45. So let's see if I can at least get 5,000 words in by noon. I think that's very doable. And then we'll check in again and see what we need to do in the afternoon to finish this thing up.
yes, I did actually buy the winter shirt for this year, which I have never done in the past, but I felt really good about this one going into it, so I ordered it at the beginning of November. <laughs> I'm very glad I get to wear it. Although, of course, whatever you manage to get done this NaNoWriMo is a win. It doesn't matter how many words you hit or whether or not you actually finished your book. It's just about making progress. I mean, I know for the last, last year during NaNoWriMo, last November was a mess in my head and in the world in general. <laughs> and I I barely, I think I tried for like three days before I threw in the towel. And then I remember for Camp NaNoWriMo over the, in April, I think last April, I definitely had a 50,000 word goal and I hit 30,000, which you know, that's awesome. That was still really great. And same thing over the summer. I don't think I even participated, but just whatever progress you're making is awesome. Um, that said, I am really excited not so much about the hitting 50,000 words, but about actually having a completed draft <laughs> slash summary of this book. Now, what is next? Okay, that's a really good question. So I did document this entire process of writing this specific book from start to finish, and I will link to the playlist with all of those videos in order up here, here, wherever it is. But just to recap, I started out by writing in my notebook and I got to, what did we end up saying? Once I typed it all in, I think I learned it was like 15,000 words-ish. And then I got to the rest of the 50,000 total um, using dictation. Once I really kind of got going in my notebook, I created my murder board, as I think we've dubbed it, on my whiteboard, which is just a character chart and I have um, a whole Skillshare course that goes way into more in-depth on that that I'll link to in the comments below. I also had a bulletin board where I kept track of, I would just summarize my scenes and tack them up as I went. That only, I only used that while I was writing by hand. And I will admit, when I look at the bulletin board and it's incomplete, it's not the whole story, it makes me feel a little bit Ugh. like the story is done now. The story in Scribner is done and I have note cards but just it not existing in full visual form on my bulletin board makes me feel a little antsy to the point where I was actually considering just making those cards as I dictated, like after I dictated a scene, writing a card and sticking it up on the bulletin board. But really, th that's like, it's not necessary. It exists in Scrivener. And I, I also felt the same way about abandoning my notebook. I really did want when I set out, I was like, oh, it'd be so fun to say I wrote a whole draft of a book by hand in a notebook. And then right before November, I just ended up making the call to switch to dictation, which I now really feel like was 100% the best call because obviously it just went a lot faster, but it's not just about speed and it's not just about finishing faster. It was that I was, I was getting to the point writing by hand where I was going to start to burn out on the story, which I hit, I mean, it doesn't matter what the book is. I hit this point with every book around the midpoint every time. And the slower I work, I think the greater the chance that I would have given up. Whereas with dictation, it was like, oh, now it's coming out faster. I was able to get like four or five scenes in one writing session rather than one or two scenes, which allowed me to make more connections and generate more scene ideas. So I, that was the bigger advantage for the speed. Not so much like that I just wanted to finish by a certain deadline because I didn't have a deadline for myself for this until I said, hey, I'm gonna jump into NaNoWriMo. Um, I hope all of that made sense. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if you have a process in mind for writing a novel and halfway through or at some point you're just like, oh, this, this process worked well, but now I want to, I think I want to switch and you're feeling weird about not finishing it the way you started it. I think that's really normal. For example, if you are a pantser, if you've always just kind of written drafts, you know, by the seat of your pants, see how they come out and you decide, you just have this one idea and you're like, oh, you know what? I think an outline would really work for this. And you start working on the outline and it's great. And then you get to a certain point in the outline where you're just, you're tired of the outline and you're like itching to start writing that draft. You can just feel it. Don't force yourself to finish the outline. Just start writing the book. The process is always going to be messy. No matter how much we would like to make it sound and appear all pretty and aesthetic or whatever, 
it's always going to be messy. You're gonna try something and it's gonna, it's not that it's gonna fail, it's just that it's only gonna take you so far and then you're gonna have to switch gears and find another way just to get to the end. It's gonna be a mess, it's okay. <laughs> and what I have is definitely a mess. Like I keep saying, the only, this is not a first draft, this is a more like a summary and when I think about what's next, well, first of all, obviously, I'm going to take a break from this book. One, because that's always the best thing to do when you finish a draft, and I will talk about more why in a second. Two, because I am starting two new client projects, and interestingly, they are both sequels to books that I ghost wrote last year, and they are both middle grade fantasies. It just kind of worked out that way. I loved writing the first books in both of these series. I'm very excited to dive back into this world, and right now my goal for both of those books is to have complete outlines by the end of December so that I can start drafting them in January. And I think that's very doable. It's the only thing on my list right now, and I'm excited to jump back into those books because I really, really love them. I love the characters, I love the stories. It's gonna be fun. So I'm gonna take, that. that's a good reason to take a break from my book. As for why we take breaks after we write a book, first of all, even if you are feeling super excited about your story, which I am right now, I figured out a lot of stuff at the end there that I'll talk about more in a second. Even if you're feeling excited and ready to dive back in, especially after something as intense as NaNoWriMo, but after just the intensity of writing an outline or a first draft or whatever you have in the first place, it's, you need to give, you need to step back and get some distance and perspective on your book. And I know I definitely need to because so much changed about the story in this whole process of writing it. Um, one thing that I can tell you for sure is that character that I hate, the influencer character who I didn't even start writing in her POV until I was more than halfway through the draft because I was just kind of dreading getting inside her head. I have discovered so much about her and about her relationship with the protagonist that I still hate her. She's still a terrible person, but she's become way more important than I thought she was at the beginning. And I know part of my, I can't even see rewrite, part of my writing the first draft is going to be including her point of view from the beginning. The other thing I'm going to consider, I'm not sure yet um, whether or not this is going to be the case, but I very much might have to cut some POVs from this story. There's like, God, I want to say literally 10. And that's not to say you can't do it. I, when I made that video a few months ago on the adaptation of Nine Perfect Strangers, I reread the book Nine Perfect Strangers. I had read it when it came out years ago. And um, just, you know, so I could make those comparisons. And, and because I enjoyed that book and I, I don't know, I just wanted to see how close the adaptation stuck to it. Spoiler alert, not at all. <laughs> and because I was in, you know, in the middle of writing my draft, I was keeping track of how many POVs Nine Perfect Strangers has, and I believe it has 12, a total of 12. Obviously there are, there's one that you, or there are two that you get to see more than most of the other characters, and then a few of them you really only get like a handful of POV scenes and they're very much intentionally like you need to be in that character's perspective in that scene for a specific purpose. So it's not like they all got equal page time, not at all. Um, but I think it really worked well for that book because these were 12 characters who were all in this same one location experiencing the same thing. So it was very easy for the reader to keep track of the story even while hopping around between so many different points of view because most of the scenes had several of these characters so even if you were in one character's perspective you were still seeing what the other characters were doing i hope that makes sense and that's really i mean this is my book is all of my characters are stuck in this house together so they are all experiencing the same thing throughout the course of the story and i think that's why having that many povs could be okay i'm asking myself now that i've got to the end are they really necessary which ones are really necessary that one character i hate has become significantly more necessary than i thought she was some of the other characters, I like their arcs, I like their stories, and I think they need to be in there, but they probably, if I don't eliminate their POV entirely, I will most certainly be cutting back on the number of scenes from their point of view because their, their arc, their journey can be told in far fewer scenes than I used, if that makes sense. Another thing is just the length of this. Okay, for perspective. 
that 60,000 word book that I turned in yesterday, The Ghost Writing Project, that 60,000 word book, my outline for that was about 10,000 words. And that's on par for me and how long my outlines tend to be in, as, as, as far as like an outline to draft ratio goes. This rough draft, which like I keep saying, is much closer to an outline than a draft, is 50,000 words. And I have no intention of writing a 250,000 word mystery novel. Like, that is not happening. I would very much like to keep this under 100,000 words. I think something more like 90 would be much more appropriate. And uh, yeah, when I just scrolled up and down Scrivener looking at the note cards for all of the scenes, it was like, ooh, okay, there's gonna have to be some consolidation and there's just some stuff that I'm gonna have to be pretty ruthless about cutting especially to make room for all of the stuff that I discovered at the end that I now need to start with at the beginning, if that makes sense. So when I do dive back into this, um, maybe in a couple weeks or maybe I'm gonna wait till January, I'm not quite sure yet, I, I will be starting there. I will probably print out this rough draft and just sit down and read it with my pens and mark it up and take some notes and kind of wrap my head around it again. I think if I turn that into a real solid outline, then writing the first draft is going to be a pretty easy and clean process. That's what I'm leaning towards doing right now. Really cleaning up what I have first and then writing the first draft. I think that's what I'm gonna do. But anyway, we, right now, it's just about taking a break and yeah. So speaking of breaks, uh, I am not going to have a vlog up for this Friday. Like I said, I'm just gonna be diving into these client projects and giving that my full attention for the next week and a half. That said, I do still plan on having a vlog of some sort up the following Friday, so I will see you guys then. In the meantime, please tell me how your NaNoWriMo went or your Nano Rebeling went or your just month of November in general went in the comments down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.